Hello and welcome to Your Future, Your Life. Supplemental reading for Aquarius. There are some details I feel like I didn't um, maybe put a sharp enough point on or make clear enough, so I'd like to go over what some of those are. Uh, take a quick second look at the chart and um, leave you to your day. Okay, so... Uh, the, the 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 most important thing to know about Aquarius, rather than any specific personality traits or uh, personal qualities it might be said to have, is that it is a fixed sign. And the nature of the fixity of Aquarius is that it forms and crystallizes patterns. It does this very rapidly whenever it's involved. And that's the place where the, the crystallization is, uh, is, is going to take place, where you see Aquarius in the chart. Um, I, I used to think that Aquarius was the sign of the only constant is change, and, and that may be a fair way to say this. That may be a, a fair way to describe the kind of crystallization, because the pattern forms, but part of the pattern is that we're always being driven into some next new thing, and, and by that I'm primarily speaking about the uh, the, the way that Aquarius manifests publicly for us at this time, which is in the, the media environment, which never seems to stay the same for more than two days. You could, you could probably do, a, do an experiment and see how many days can go by in a row where you're not prompted to upgrade something. For, on the personal level, the thing to remember is that these patterns form in your personality, and they can make it <clears throat> very different, for, difficult for you to make the kinds of alterations and adjustments that you want to make in your life. And so, therefore, when transits come along that prompt you to make those uh, changes and to to catch up with yourself, in a sense, uh, it it can be challenging, and it can it can seem like too much too fast. Now the the current transit through Aquarius is Saturn. Uh, this happens only two and a half years out of every 29 years. It is a rare and precious moment for those born with a strong Aquarius signature in your chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, Saturn, Chiron. Those, all of those would count as a strong signature. And what you get under the influence of uh, Saturn and Aquarius is the chance to make certain changes voluntarily to to uh, go through a series of adaptations that uh, help you figure out where you are, figure out where you want to be, and then plot a course to get there, and also to make amendments to the patterns of your life that uh, th that are holding you in place, uh, and. Th therefore not have to be compelled to do those things in, in some uh, involuntary way. Uh, so that is, uh, that is the advantage and the benefit of Saturn in, in Aquarius. Now, uh, my concern is that Pluto is heading for Aquarius. Pluto uh, will reach Aquarius in late March of uh, 2023. That's right around the corner. And typically with a, a transit of this kind, the effects of the transit are uh, m manifesting well before the actual transit itself arrives. But well before the ephemeris says the first day of Pluto and Aquarius is March whatever, 2023, we are living under the new conditions and the attitudes and the values are changing. And uh, my, my concern here is that uh, Pluto is going to represent some overpowering force that you need to be prepared for. You need to be prepared for in the way of being able to hang loose and to be adaptable. Uh, as I said, I believe in, in, your, in, the, in the original Aquarius reading, uh, P Pluto through the first may not be easy, but Pluto through the twelfth, which you've lived through, is more difficult because you don't have a... a a, a, an easy point of power. You can't really focus on something in the 12th that's going to manifest in uh, in strange and surreptitious ways uh, and come cre creeping through your dreams and your imagination and not uh, necessarily give you a chance to get a firm grasp on it. Not so with Pluto in the first house. You will have many opportunities to get a firm grasp on it. But what I suggest is that you 
practice mainly being able to uh, hang loose, I guess is the phrase that I'm using, and loosen up those patterns and see where they are and see the way that they influence and impact you uh, so that when Pluto arrives, uh, you, you are in a more relaxed space and you, and you also have your options open. So the main thing preparing you for Pluto in Aquarius is Saturn in Aquarius, which is, uh, so, some people will experience this as, as a depressive influence uh, because Saturn conjunct the sun or Saturn going over the moon or through the first house. To me, it seems like a thing where maybe it's a, a little like, um, uh, you know, running with weights on or, uh, wor you know, working out with weights on so that... Uh, you, your body's a little bit heavier, and this way, when the weights come off, your your body is lighter. Or like donuts, that I guess they they're not donuts anymore. Used on uh, when when a hitter in baseball is on deck, they might swing two bats, or they might swing a bat with donuts, so that the bat feels lighter when they actually uh, are at the plate, and they and they swing, and it's it, it's an illusion, but it it seems like a lighter. Uh, instrument and they have more uh, control over it. So whatever your metaphor is there, uh, Saturn in Aquarius is likely to be conferring opportunities, but there are going to have to be opportunities that you rise to, opportunities that you work for and that you prepare for and that you be willing to patiently go through the, the process of, um, of, of making them real. Now, later in the year, uh, basically between, depending on how you measure, between, between mid-August and mid-March, uh, Mars will be in your fellow air sign Aquarius, and between mid-October and mid-January, Mars will be retrograde in, uh, in your fellow air sign Gemini. I said Gemini, right? Okay, and so here's what that looks like. We showed you this before, but I just want to show you again. Um, and so uh, Gemini is your fifth place. You can see it there. Because just make sure I'm not, I'm not I got it backwards. Um, uh, Gemini is your fifth place. Uh, you can tell because you can just count one, two, three, four, five places from the reference sign, the ascendant, the first house, whatever you want to call it. And the, the retrograde of Mars in Gemini is in the fifth house for you, your fellow air sign, fifth place, fifth house is about, for you, some massive creative experiment. Uh, th 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 this is not a, uh, this is not a, let's say, gentle influence, Mars retrograde in, in Gemini. It's, it's, uh, it has, it has a, a, a bit of a bull running through the funhouse, uh, hall of mirrors type of, uh, of sensation to it. And, Yet, Gemini is mostly an internal and introspective and uh, f f function of awareness more than it is something else. And then it's perfect in the house of art. And so here, we, we really uh, are looking at using a lot of experimentation with language, uh, with communication, and potentially with visual imagery to uh, media generally is covered by Gemini as an experiment and the experiment the, um, it's not necessary the role of the experiment is to um, test your values and to help you align with what you are truly in accord with so that's the second house so the transit the transit of Mars retrograde makes a series of squares to Neptune. In another video that I'm going to do for everyone, I'll, I'll explain that in more detail. But for you, this is really about the process of expressing yourself as an experiment to make sure that you're being true to yourself and also to help relax the fixed nature of the, of the sign Aquarius so that you are adaptable and, um, and in an open state when, when Pluto arrives in, um, in uh, March of, of 2023. So that is my summary. Um, I, I, if I keep going, I'll, I'll, I'll redo the whole reading. I will add one last thing. I want to one last point. I don't think I emphasized enough, which is that language has a lot of power for you right now. Uh, language has power generally 
for you, but especially right now, because Jupiter is moving in and out of your third house, which is the house of language, and Jupiter is moving, and Chiron is in your third house. It's a long-term visitor, and uh, this is about, and I'll, I'll get to this in, 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 uh, in that open public video in a moment, so I'll have more to say about this, but it is about understanding uh, the, the way in which part of the fixed pattern of your life has been set by overexposure to video, to visual, vi excuse me, to, to technology, uh, to mo mostly digital and, com and computer technology. And this has formed your personality in a certain way. And what I'm, I'm saying that the planets are suggesting here is to retake that back in some natural analog form uh, so, so that you uh, fully take control of your, your language and your ability to express yourself. So this is one way to also uh, change the patterns that have been formed. Use language. It shows up many other ways, uh, including in the house associated with your spirituality, your, your beliefs and your spiritual process are something that you in particular need to be able to get into words and not have be some ethereal thing, well, oh, I think that I'm, I, I, I think that the Buddhists are right, or I, you know, uh, I love the Pope, but rather, what exactly is it that you are thinking, feeling, and processing to delineate uh, your relationship to source, to spirit, to your spiritual quest in, in words uh, such that uh, you can actually read back what you're saying and watch your values and attitudes evolve with you. Okay, I will call it good there. Kate, thanks for doing this uh, late addendum. I'm available if you need to write to me, efc at planetwaves.net. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your business. And most of all, thank you for your trust. And bye for now. Mm -hmm.